Let's come on in and have a seat as we begin our worship this evening. If you are using your hymnals, um, the first hymn we will sing this evening is uh, 282. 282 will sing the first and the fourth verses of this hymn. I know that my Redeemer lives and ever prays for me. I know eternal life he gives from sin and sorrow free. I know, I know that my Redeemer lives. I know, I know eternal life he gives. I know, I know that my Redeemer lives. I know that over yonder stands a place prepared for me. A home, a house not made with hands most wonderful to see. I know, I know that my Redeemer lives I know, I know eternal life he gives. I know, I know that my Redeemer lives. Okay, before the prayer and the scripture reading, let's turn to 137. 137. And once again, we'll sing um, the first and the fourth verse of this hymn. Fairest Lord Jesus, ruler of all nature, oh, Father, we are honored at this time to be able to come together with other brothers and sisters and to sing these songs of praise unto Thee and to study Your Word. Father, we are so thankful for the excellent lectureship that we've had, for all the wonderful lessons, the fellowship, and 
all the things that we've been able to accomplish with this. We pray that you'll be with those that have been visiting with us and let them be safe if they're on the roads home as they arrive at their destination. Father, we're so thankful for those that are visiting with us this evening. Please bless them and watch over them. We pray, Father, that as we approach this week, that we can let our light shine as we need to, to glorify Thee. We pray at this time that we can clear our hearts of worldly things and we can focus on our lesson this evening. We also pray, Father, that you'll be with those that we have been raising up by name uh, in prayer that are in need due to health and other challenges that they may have. Please bless them and be with their families and give them encouragement and strength during this trying time. Father, at this time, we pray that you'll forgive us of our sins. Thank you for your son, Jesus, that gave his life for us. In Christ's name, amen. Scripture reading this evening comes from the book of Luke, chapter 10, verses 17 through 20. Luke 10, 17 through 20. It says, Then the seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. If you were able to attend this lect lectureship, uh, much of um, what was talked about had to do with the Word and uh, that we need to really uh, delve into the Bible and know the Bible, know God's Word. And uh, we picked this song out to kind of go along with that. That's 154, and we'll sing uh, the first and the fourth verse of this song. It's convenient if you could stand for this song. Give me the Bible, star of gladness gleaming, to cheer the wonder, lone and tempest-tossed. No storms can hide that radiance, peaceful beaming, since Jesus came to seek and save the lost. Give me the Bible, holy message shining. Thy light shall guide me in the narrow way. Precept and promise, law and love combining. Till night shall vanish in eternal day. Give me the Bible, lamp of life immortal. Hold up that splendor by the open grave. Show me the light from heaven shining portals. Show me the glory gilding Jordan's waves. Give me the Bible, thy light shall guide me in the narrow Accept and promise, law and love combining, till night shall vanish in eternal day. Please be seated. The song of invitation uh, will be number 584 if you're using your hymnal, softly and tenderly. Good evening. We've got a pretty decent crowd here tonight. Uh, this is, for those of you that are visiting, I know we got several visitors here. We, we've been involved in a, in a lectureship all weekend. And we ha just had a 3 o'clock service out at the Cane Ridge Meeting House. And, uh, and so usually the 6 o'clock service is pretty small, but we've got a great crowd here. I'm glad you all are here uh, for our time together uh, studying from God's Word. If you are visiting, 
Uh, we want to let you know how thankful we are that you chose to be with us. Uh, and, and please stick around, let us talk to you, let us get to know you a little bit, and, uh, and we'd love to get to meet you. Our lectureship this past weekend, we've been dealing with this theme of confidence in times of conflict. And during this study, we've been sitting in Matthew chapter 10. So if you have your Bibles, let's go ahead and open up to Matthew chapter 10. And really, we, I just want us to sit in, sit in two short uh, passages to the, tonight, and, uh, and then the lesson will be yours. But in Matthew chapter 10, the context of what we've been dealing with is Jesus is pr preparing to send his uh, disciples out on what's referred to as the limited commission. Uh, they're preparing, he's preparing them to, to be disciples, to go out to, to the household, to, to the house of Israel, the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and, and not to the G Gentiles yet, not, not to the Samaritans, but, but within the house of Israel. So, so he's preparing them to be disciples. And so, so he talks about what's, what's going to be, uh, what's ahead of them, what they need to be prepared for as they go out and fulfill their mission and their, 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 their purpose as being his disciples. And he, he walks through in, in Matthew chapter 10 many of the conflicts that they're going to be facing as they go out into the cities trying to be his disciples. I, I want us to notice some of, some of the conflicts that, that he makes very clear and prepares them for here in Matthew chapter 10. Uh, we see several of them. First, we see in verses 9 and 10, we see this conflict that they're going to run, it, run into where they, they're forced to, to rely on God. Notice what, what uh, Jesus has to say in Matthew chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. He says, provide neither gold nor silver nor copper in your, money in your money belts, nor bags for your journey, nor two tunics, nor sandals, nor staffs, for a worker is worthy of his food. See, here Jesus is preparing his disciples, and he said, when you go out, I don't want you to have uh, more or an abundance of the things you may need. I, I want you to go out, and, and I want you to work. And I want you to understand that, that, that by not having those things that maybe we consider to be uh, necessities in life, it forces us to rely and trust that God's going pro to provide for us. See, I, I think about myself and, and a lot of us when we're preparing for a trip. Uh, I, there have been very few times where I've been about to leave the country on a, on a trip and, and I've thought, man, I've got so much room in my suitcase. I wish I could find more to put in here. Right? Usually it's so overloaded that we're trying to figure out what can we get rid of to make place for the things that we truly need. And here Jesus is sending his disciples out into these cities that, that they don't know, and, and he says, I don't want you to take all these extra things with you. Don't take extra money. Don't take extra clothing. Don't take extra provisions. Because where you're going and you're going to be working, and as a result of your work, people should look at you and, and, and respond in a way where they're going to take care of, of your needs. Because a worker is worthy of his wages, worthy of, of his food. See, in this task of becoming a disciple, they're faced with this conflict of putting aside the things maybe they considered to be necessities in life and truly relying on God. But there's more to it. Uh, they, they run into this conflict uh, of rejection from others. No, notice in, starting in verse 11. It says, now whatever city or, or town you enter, inquire who in it is worthy, and stay there until you go out. And when you go into a household, greet it. If the household is worthy, let your peace be upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whoever uh, will not receive you nor hear your words, when you depart from that house or city, shake off the dust from your feet. Assuredly, I say to you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Jesus is preparing his disciples for the rejection that they may face from others. He said, when you go into these towns, when you go into these cities, I want you to seek out someone. Seek out a household that, that, that's going to take care of you, that's going to provide for you. And, and when you enter the house, greet them and, and, and say, peace to this house. And, and if they're, they're worthy, they'll accept you and they'll take care of you and they'll provide for you. But be prepared, because not every house you go to is going to welcome you with open arms. There's going to be times where people are going to reject you, where they're not going to want to hear what you have to say. And when that happens, don't let that discouragement stop you from your mission. But instead, it said, shake the dust off your feet and move on. Because your job, your purpose, your goal, your ministry 
of being a disciple is important. And no matter what comes your way, you need to have confidence to move forward. You're going to face conflict of of rejection, but keep going. He moves on and says, when you're my disciple, you're going to face the conflict of persecution. Notice what he said in, in verse 16. He said, behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Uh, Jesus says, what I'm getting ready to send you in to do uh, is not a a simple task. It's not something that that is going to be easy. It's not always going to be pleasant because you're going to be looked at as a sheep among wolves. See, the message that, that you're carrying is a message that not everyone likes to hear. And you can be assured that there's going to be people that, that are going to confront you because of your faith. There's going to be people that are going to stand up against you. There's going to be people that are going to try to tear you down. And you're going to be, to a certain degree, helpless, as a sheep is to wolves. So you need to be prepared, when you're my disciple, for the conflict of persecution that may come your way. Finally, he says this, you need to be prepared for this conflict of betrayal. Verses 21 and 22. He says, now a brother will deliver up brother to death, and a father his child, and children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but he who endures to the end will be saved. Jesus says you need to understand that maybe the people that you care about most in life, the people you're closest to, they may begin to reject you because of what you're trying to do. They may turn on you. The people that you thought would do anything for you may hate so badly what you're trying to do that they'll do terrible things. Jesus wanted his disciples to make sure they understood and they were prepared for all the conflicts that may come their way and encourage them to have the confidence to push through. See, we talked about a lot of these things over the weekend. But what I want us to talk about is the result that takes place when we have the confidence to push through the conflict that we may encounter by being disciples of Jesus. If you flip with me over to, over to Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10, it's a parallel passage uh, with, uh, with Matthew 10. Uh, dealing with, with the limited commission again. But, but here in Luke chapter 10, we get an interesting perspective of what takes place. Because in Luke chapter 10, we not only have the, the same discussion uh, of the disciples, preparing the disciples and sending them out, but we see the result of what happens when they come back. And when we get to verse 17, we see two very powerful things happen when we have confidence in the face of conflict. The first result of having confidence in conflict is that Satan will be defeated. Notice what's said in Luke chapter 10, starting in verse 17, verse 18. It said, Then the seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Uh, one of those powerful images, maybe in all of Scripture. These disciples, Jesus prepared them for what, was, what they were going to take on. They, he prepared them for the conflict they were going to face by being disciples, and, and they went out. And as they returned, they're on fire for the Lord. They, they say, even the demons were subject in your name. And you know what happened? When we went to those cities, and, and we were confident, we, were, we proclaimed your name, we saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. It, it wasn't just where, where we gained this little victory and, and Satan whimpered away. No, no, no. We overcame and completely defeated Satan where he fell like lightning from heaven. It's powerful to think about. You see, we're told in 1 John chapter 3 and verse 8 that the purpose of Jesus was to come to destroy the works of the, of the devil. And as his disciples, we need to carry on that same mission. And when we have confidence in the face of trials and the face of conflict and we don't let that stop us in our ministry, then Satan falls like lightning from heaven we find victory over him. The second result we see that takes place when we have confidence in the face of of conflict is that our names will be written in heaven. Luke chapter 10. 
starting in verse 20. It said, Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. See, the disciples came back, and they were so excited. They were pumped because even the demons were subject to them. Uh, they had power over these demons, uh, and, and they were so excited. And, and Jesus says, don't, don't be so excited that you had power over these demons. The reason you should be so excited is because as a result of your confidence and the face of all the conflict you faced when you went out to those cities, that your name is written in heaven. See, we sing a song fairly often when the role is called up yonder. When we have confidence in the face of trial, in the face of conflict, then we can know beyond a shadow of a doubt that, our, that when that role is called up yonder, my name will be there. And that's the greatest joy that we can face, that we can, that we can have in this life. But it's only through our great confidence, allowing us to push through the challenges we face as being disciples, that we can defeat Satan that our names can be written in heaven. In this life, you're going to face trials. It's a reality. Jesus made that very clear to us. He wasn't trying to hide anything. He wanted us to know for a fact that by being his disciples, we're going to face conflict. The question is, how was your attitude when you face it? When those trials come, do you begin to complain to God? Because why, why, God, would you let these things happen to me? God, why would you, you let these terrible things come into my life? Why would you let these people do those things? Or do we have confidence that God's in control? Confidence that he's going to provide. And confidence that no matter what happens, when we push forward, our names will be written in heaven. Tonight, maybe in life, you've allowed those trials and those conflicts to discourage you to the point that maybe you're not on fire with the Lord as you should be. Maybe you've allowed your fire to, to dwindle out. I want to encourage you tonight to make a change. To understand that there's great results that take place when we have full confidence in God and trust that he's in control. And if you need that encouragement we want to be able to be there for you. We want to be able to, to pray with you, to wrap our arms around you, to encourage you and help you in that walk. Maybe tonight you're not a Christian. Maybe tonight you've never put on Christ in baptism and dedicated your life to him. Maybe you see the trials of this world and you think that's such a difficult life. If you're not a child of God, there's one thing that we do know. That, and that's that when we, when we haven't dedicated our lives to him, then our names aren't written in heaven. And although the Christian life comes with challenges, it also comes with great joy. And tonight, if you're not a Christian and you need to be, we want to be able to help you in that way as well. Tonight, if we can help you or assist you in any way, please let us know as we together stand as we sing. Watching for you and for me. Come home, come home. Ye who are weary, come home. Earnestly. Tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling, oh sinner, come home. Why 
should we tarry when Jesus is pleading, pleading for you and for me? Why should we linger and heed not his mercies, mercies for you and for me? Come home, come home, ye who are weary, come home, earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling. Calling all sinner, come home. Time is now fleeting, the moments are passing, passing from you and from me. Shadows are gathering, deathbeds are coming, coming for you and for me. Come home, come home. The weary come home earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling all sinners. For the wonderful love he has promised, promised for you and for me. Though we have sinned, he has mercy and pardon, pardon for you and for me. Come home, come home. Ye who are weary, come home. Earnestly, Tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling all sinners, come home. Please be seated. If you have not had the opportunity to partake of the Lord's Supper, you have that opportunity now. If you will make your way to one of the front pews, you will be served as we sing the um, first verse of 784, Why Did My Savior Come to Earth, verse 1. Why did my Savior come to earth and to the humble go? Why did he choose a lowly birth? Because he loved me so. me so he 
precious life for me, for me, because he loved me so. To prepare our minds, we'll sing verses 2 and 3 of this same song. Why did he drink the bitter cup of sorrow, pain, and woe? Why on the cross be lifted up? Because he loved me so. He loved me so. He loved me so. He, so. he gave his precious life for me, for me, because he loved me so. Till Jesus comes, I'll sing his praise, and then to glory go. And reign with him through endless days because he loved me so. He loved me so. He loved me. He gave his precious life for me, for me, because he loved me so. Let's give thanks for the bread. Dear Father in heaven, we are so grateful to come into your presence and, and offer our thanks for this bread which represents your son Jesus, who gave his life for all. We ask this in your son Jesus' name. And dear Father, we come before you again humbly asking to remove our worldly cares and our daily concerns, Father, and help us to focus on your precious blood, uh, which was shed uh, for forgiveness of sins. And we ask this in your Son's precious name. Amen. Father, we are so blessed to be able to come to a place like this and to worship you freely uh, without worry, Father. We're so grateful for the men and the women who teach our children in this place and, and the men who teach us 
and, and the people that oversee these funds and, and see that your word is spread not only here in Lexington and in Kentucky, but throughout the world. And Father, we just pray that these uh, funds that are collected this evening will go to the furtherance of your kingdom. And it's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen.